Hi, this is Mary from Teacher's Pet Dog Training. Today I'd like to talk to you about resource guarding. Simply put, resource guarding is when a dog finds value in something. Could be a toy, could be food, could be a ball. And when someone goes to try to take it from them, the dog may snap, growl, get stiff, show its teeth. So it's clearly sharing with you that it does not want you to take what it has. When you get a new puppy, it's really important that you start a process of desensitizing them to your hands, to toys, to items, anything that could possibly create um, the need for them to hang on to it or resource it. So a couple of things I'd like to recommend to you is number one, hand feeding. When you bring your puppy home, get some of the food that you're going to give your puppy and just simply start to hand feed your puppy. This helps them start to see that your hand is a source of good things. The next thing is take different types of toys but whatever toy you use take two of them. Give the puppy one toy they're actually playing with the toy and then make a bigger deal out of the second toy. As the puppy releases the first toy, they go and they play with the second toy. They're interacting with the second toy, pick up the first toy, start making that become more exciting. Now what you're doing is you're starting a really simple process of trading your puppy for one toy for another. So this, before the problem ever becomes a problem where they want to hang on to something and not give it up, you're starting to teach them this trading game. So now from the get-go, they're developing a nice solid foundation of your hand in the presence of a toy and that your hand is what's offering the items to them. The third thing that you can do is as you have your treats, you want to start touching your puppy in different areas. So this also creates a setting again where your hand is something that's good to the puppy instead of something that could be kind of scary. I'd like to talk to you about what we call creating a bond with our dog. If you can look back at a time in your life where there was someone in your life that you just really liked hanging out with, there was something about them that you just liked being in their presence, that bond that you had between that person and yourself is the same bond that we want to get between our dog and ourselves. And the way we would then look at doing that is we want to create different activities that allow the dog to want to seek out and hang out with you. And one of the key pieces is we want to develop relationship games that ensure that the dog is having fun with you with this reward, yes. game, toy, yes. piece of treat, whatever. If I'm playing with a toy with my dog and I have had no prior conditioning with my dog or just kind of hanging out and building a bond with my dog, and I go to reach for my dog's toy and the, do and the dog stiffens or the dog tries to cover the toy. There's conflict between he and I in me taking his toy. So the dog is now conflicted. Do I hang on to my stuff? Do I get up and move away? Do I bite that person? So the dog wants to hang on to it and yet if you've had enough conditioning the dog doesn't want to bite you but he doesn't want you to take his toy. So I've created what we would call conflict in this little interaction between me and my dog. When we have a dog who can play with us, then we have a tool that we can use to get them to do obedience. When I'm working with any dog, at least half of the session is just me and the dog hanging out and socializing together. The tighter the bond between you and your dog, the more at ease it is for you to start asking the dog to do different obedience behaviors. And when we have a toy that we can use, something that the dog values and really likes, and the dog is willing to give that item up while we're playing, now you actually have a nice little tool that you can use between you and him when they're learning obedience. When you do have a dog who's very, very toy possessive, you may have to get a lower value toy to begin with. And the other thing is make sure that you have two toys. If your dog has something, you don't go try to take it, take it from him, you exchange it. So don't wade in and try to grab it. Try to get your dog to focus on the other thing. And then as soon as he focuses on the other thing, now you take the other item and then exchange it for him. So again, it's never gonna be, I'm gonna go in and take from you if you have a heavy resourcer. I'm gonna exchange it. Then over the course of time, what we're doing right now is we can actually take the toy, associate it with your hand with good things, and now the dog can let you manipulate the toy in their presence without feeling like they have to eat the item and then grab the toy, eat the piece of food and then grab the toy. This 
takes time and patience and you really have to watch your dog's behavior so you don't put him over threshold. Montague really likes to hang on to the toys that he has and he's not real thrilled about giving them up. So what we're starting to do is we're starting to create an exercise where there is no conflict in giving up the item, the toy. In this case, it happens to be a, an electric toy that wiggles and moves when he touches it. So what we end up doing is we give him a nice uh, high-end value treat like a piece of lamb. We have him do the find it game, which he already knows. And then when he comes back, the reward is that he gets the, the little fox again, this little moving tail. When you go to touch a toy or take something, if you get a growl or you get a stiffness or you get teeth showing, the very first thing you want to do is move the dog away from the item, make that item disappear for, for a long time, and then when now when the dog comes back, whether you're in the kitchen or in the living room or whatever, everything you do with that dog is going to be hand fed. So you want your hands to mean good things. So all their treats, all their meals, you can do a touch game. Touch. Yes. Touch. Yes. Everything that you give him in terms of calories is going to come from your hand. Touch. Yes. So that his, your hands really become something wonderful. Could be a shake. Yes. Could be a touch. Touch. Yes. Good boy. The purpose of this exercise, again, is to help desensitize Montague with what he had as a behavior where he wanted to hang on to the toy. Now we want to show him that this toy is going to be used in our training without him feeling like he has to hold on to it and not give it up. Our whole goal is that we can use that toy in our reward system when we ask him to out of the outset. Yes, we free him back into it. So again, we had to go back and recondition that emotional state of mind because he was very, very uh, savvy in terms of hanging on to his toys and not wanting to release them. Had I tried to do something like take his toy too soon, a oh, really good way to get dog bit. Now we let him enjoy it. Now I just give him a treat as he has it yes. so that he learns I'm not here to take it from him. He can still hang on to his toy. And I don't want him to see that my hand is near the toy and that he feels the need to get funny. So we're just in several exercises here, we're showing that him to go find something else which is a piece of lamb as soon as he gets it we mark it yes. and then he comes back and he gets the toy as his reward and then when he releases it we do it again multiple times and now when he has it near himself I'm going to go ahead and feed him with the item in place so that he doesn't see my hand as something that would take his item good boy good boy I got him to sit, which is a behavior he already knows. I fed him multiple times. As I was feeding him, I picked his toy up, so I had his toy ready to go. Once I was done with the food, I had him pause, and then I said, yes, and we freed him into the, to the secondary reward, which is the toy. So again, what we're doing is we're using food as a very powerful motivator to get him to do a settled behavior, like a sit, before we release him into the toy, which is a movement behavior. So you'll notice I bring that toy to life as I move it away, and that gets him to want to engage on the toy. We use the food to kind of settle him in with the sit, which opted to get him settled, which we want, we want to cap that energy, and then boom, we released him into the toy. Again, all without conflict of me taking a toy that he's afraid I'm not going to give it back to him. Once we know a dog has resourcing, now the next step is how do we remedy that? Our ultimate goal in the end is to simply allow the dog not to feel the need to hang on to the item that it has or not feel nervous in the presence of us being near that item. So simply put, we want a dog who can then freely give it up without the need to feel that they have to protect it. <laughs> Hope these tips help. Remember, get your pup, get your dog, get to a place where your dog is just out there having fun seeking something out or you out. Until next time, take care.